to hit record. We should be live on Facebook. And today is Monday, so it's another opportunity to have a great week and to start the week off with this uh, group is really such a blessing and a pleasure for me. So good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me. It is Monday Morning Mojo, and today we're going to continue our conversation about growth and the concept that growth is intentional, not necessarily always organic. I mean, certainly we grow over time um, and certainly can grow through our experiences, but really to have, I think, uh, transformative growth and to really start to see our lives move on a path to have the things that we really want and dream about, then we have to be intentional about growth. And so, uh, last week, we started the conversation based on some of the content from John Maxwell's book. Uh, so we're going to continue looking at some things in the book today. This is John Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. So if you have not read it, I, I highly recommend it. It's an easy read, but it's full of really good content. And, um, you know, for me as a coach, it's all about growing, right? It's all about helping people move forward. And that's why I started this group. Uh, just about a year ago. So uh, next Monday, we're going to celebrate one year of Monday Morning Mojo, which is really exciting. So I'm looking forward to that. And um, I trust that you're getting a lot of great content from, from these calls. And um, I, in preparation for this one year anniversary, would love to encourage you to make a post on our Facebook group and share some things that you've taken away uh, from the from the group from these Monday morning sessions over the last year or anything you want to say about uh, this group would be exciting to get your feedback. Um, so this morning I am going to encourage you as I always do take some notes because I think we're going to go through um, some things that you may want to go back and reflect on later as well as um, make a list of things that you want to take action on as well. So um, there's always um, a lot of, I think, power in writing things down. It may not always be what comes naturally to most people, but I will say that when you write things down, uh, you have an opportunity to go back and you have an opportunity to really put it into action and your brain will retain more information when you write things down as well. So. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, some of the content from John Maxwell's book. He talks a lot here about change in the book too, right? Because when we grow, we're changing. And I think that change depends on your choices. So if I was writing down some notes, I would probably write that statement down. Change depends on your choices. And so we are always just one decision away from our next opportunity or the next transformation in our life. And um, as we think about how growth should be intentional, we want to also, I think, be reminded that the growth that we want to experience should be in alignment with our passion, should be in alignment with our purpose. So also taking time to really get clear about that is, is going to be critical. Um, and so what John does is he goes through these 15 laws, as he calls them, these invaluable laws. Uh, last week, we looked at two of them. They happen to be the first two, um, which was the uh, law of intentionality. Um, and it was also the, oh boy, I got stuck on, the, on those, law of intentionality uh, and the law of awareness. And today, I want to talk a little bit about the law of the mirror. So the law of the mirror is really about understanding that the way we see ourselves is the way that we show up in the world and that the way we think about ourselves and the way that we believe in ourselves is how we're going to behave. And I know that self-esteem uh, is probably the single most uh, significant key to understanding a person's behavior, right? So as a coach for the last decade, I've, I've often seen uh, people uh, behave in some way, and, and I know that it's really connected back to the way that they're seeing themselves. It's connected back to a sense of their own self-awareness and self-esteem. And this is such a huge, huge concept and topic. And, and for some reason, many of us are afraid to go there and talk about it. 
And, um, you know, for some of us, we were raised in a very positive, loving, encouraging environment. Uh, and, and for others, we were not. And then there's some of us in between who were raised in a loving environment, but yet some of the messages that we heard or some of the things that we saw programmed us to think less of ourselves along the way. And, you know, the reality is that we were all created to be these divine, inspired, amazing, creative individuals. I mean, the, the amount of potential that we have um, and that we could really tap into is mind blowing. And yet so many of us waste so much time thinking less of ourselves and we waste so much time putting ourselves down or putting ourselves in a box. Um, and, you know, it's an opportunity today, if you're listening to this message, to make a choice uh, to at least start to think about how you can work on this if this is an issue for you. Um, and I think that people don't reach their full potential because of their own self-esteem. Because if you could see yourself in a way that others see you, if you could see yourself the way your creator sees you, uh, then I think that you would be pretty floored and pretty inspired to just go out there and do whatever it is on your heart or in your mind to do. And so John Maxwell talks about this as the law of the mirror because the question he puts out is, what do you see? What do you truly see when you look in the mirror? And what do you think about yourself when you look in the mirror? And I think that when we begin to recognize our own value and we begin to um, really put that value out and add that value to ourselves, we can be unstoppable. So I'm just going to pause here because I do have my friends on Zoom that I love uh, because I get to talk to you. Um, any thoughts on what I'm saying so far and uh, any anything that you'd like to share so far? Which is okay if you don't, but uh, hi, Mike. Good morning. Yeah. Hi. Good morning. Yeah. I, I remember years, years ago when I started in the, in the business, you know, I was always very, you know, Personable. I go into a big room and usually I'd find myself hiding in a corner somewhere until somebody came over and then, you know, got into conversation. But as the time went by, I mean, I used to, I remember the first real estate office I went into, like in 1998, <laughs> I was like, oh God, they're going to throw me out. And I became like best friends with the gatekeeper, so to speak. Right away, we hit it off. I knew her son-in-law, which was a, a good break. But I did I did not, you know, they always say the toughest door to walk out is your own. Yeah. And I took that to heart. And I, and I went in there and I realized it's not that bad. And hundreds and hundreds of uh, real estate insurance offices later on, I don't mind going in, you know, it's, it's not failure. They just not ready for you, or for the most part, you get a very, very good reception. Even if it's not, no, we can't do anything right now. It's still positive, and I just feel uh, better about myself than I did twenty some on odd years ago doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Self esteem yeah. is a definite issue. Even when I was a kid, same thing. Until I did something well and proved myself, then I got out of the poor me mode or the I can't do this mode right. and acted positive. Because what you think about yourself is everything, right? So what you think about yourself is true. And um, so I appreciate that, thank you. And good morning to everyone on Facebook. Please uh, know that I am paying attention to you and I'm so happy that you're here watching. So uh, let me know you're here, say good morning. And uh, if you have any questions, put them on the Facebook group as well. You know, I think that um, one of the things that really inspired me to become a coach is the, the deep belief that I have that um, everyone has the potential to be successful. Everyone has the potential to live the life of their dreams. And I believe that what stops them, as I said before, is um, whatever they believe about themselves and the limits they put on their own ability, right? And I think that we all have the potential to cultivate whatever the seeds are, cultivate our own talents and and, and figure, out how, figure out how we want to put that out into the world. 
Um, and I think that as we support each other, encourage each other, as a coach, I like to think I add value to people, then you know that's really the opportunity for people to grow and to blossom. Um, and so you know it's about seeing value in yourself and adding value to yourself and your thinking. So Jill um, asked a question around um, this concept of seeing and seeing yourself in the mirror. Uh, Jill, do you want to elaborate on that or, or ask that question? Um, well, you know, I I had an intern that worked with me last, I don't know, three years ago, and he was um, the Commission for the Blind. He physically, obviously, was blind from birth. Um, and it was an interesting concept because he was really, he's quite talented. Um, but the definition of how, and, and just reflecting on what you're saying, yeah. with regards to the law of the mirror, how, how one does perceive themselves if they don't have visual uh, options here. Sure. Um, so, but so. which is a different, it's just, I mean, it, it circles back to how do you do it? But what I wonder if Mr. Maxwell had a thought on how to work with people with some limitations. Um, so I can't speak for John Maxwell. He doesn't address that specifically in the book, but I think what we have to do is expand our thinking on this to realize that the law of the mirror and how and, and the question of what do you see when you look at yourself in the mirror is really more metaphoric. And it's really about how you see yourself in your mind's eye, right? So um, I, I don't live with a vision impairment. However, uh, it's really about how we think and then how we believe and how, well, really it starts with how we believe and then how we think, right? Because our beliefs are the rules we live by. So how does that individual believe in themselves, right? How do they believe in their capability? How, have, and in, in their case, again, um, being impaired with, with sight, um, how are they living life to the fullest capacity that they can? It's just in a different capacity, right? But it's really, it's about that belief system in who we are and what we're capable of doing, what we can learn to do too, you know? And, and I think that that's another key concept with growth and with change is adaptability and knowing, you know, that we are resilient enough as human beings to, to figure some things out, to get the support. Uh, and we can be extremely adaptable and, and really learn how to um, accomplish things in, in big ways. So I think the law of the mirror is much more metaphoric in that sense, but great question. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about this concept of self-esteem and you know, really where that comes from because um, I think it starts with our self-image and then that is building on our self-esteem, right? Or tearing it down. And so we have to take an honest look at how do we see ourselves in our own mind's eye? How do we, you know, um, in other words, if, if I was to say to you to choose one word that describes you, what word comes to mind? You know, and is that a powerful word? So I think that we have to take the time to invest in ourselves, which is really what a lot of, you know, the work I do is about and why I do this Monday Morning Mojo with all of you is so that you can take some time to invest in you, so that you can take time to pour into yourself and, and really, I think sometimes just pick our head up and get out of that, that sort of hamster wheel we can find ourselves on, right? Working, working, working and going through life's motions. Yet, yeah, are we really putting time into developing our greatest asset, which is ourselves, right? And so if you're writing any questions down, I would ask that question. And I would probably ask myself, you know, what am I doing for personal growth? You know, and is it intentional or is it kind of accidental? And where, where can I seek out opportunities to grow? What books can I read? What classes can I attend? And what groups can I participate in? Who are some of the people that I spend time with and talk to? And all of those experiences are programming us as we've talked before on Monday Morning Mojo. And it's building up or tearing down our self-esteem. And so we have to really get clear about that because then what, what comes from that is our talk, our self-talk, right? So if I was to eavesdrop on your self-talk throughout the day, what would I hear? That's a powerful question. If someone were to eavesdrop on your self-talk, what would we hear? 
And would you want to, to share that? <laughs> you know, and would you talk to a, another person the way you tend to talk to yourself? You know, so I think that as we work to get aware, this law of awareness was something we talked about last week. And as we become more aware of our self-talk, uh, it's an opportunity for us to really regulate it and for us to really shift our mindset from something that is negative and limiting at times to really more powerful, positive and empowering. And so I think steps to building our self image has to start with the way we talk to ourselves, you know, really guarding our self talk. Uh, I think another thing that has a huge impact and John does talk about this in the book is understanding the impact that our environment has on our on, on us as well. Uh, and so sometimes that that impact from our environment is um, is directed and sometimes it's it's assumed or brought in by ourselves. So in other words, um, this whole concept of comparing ourselves to other people, right? And I think that a lot of us can suffer from that at times. Uh, and social media, right, is, is an opportunity, a great opportunity to connect the way we're using it now. Uh, hello again, everyone on Facebook. Um, but yet we are looking through this lens on social media of what people choose to show you, right? And some people are very transparent. Some people are very authentic, others not so much. And so we can get these images and we can make assumptions that what we're seeing is reality and based on our self-esteem, we can make decisions about how we measure up in comparison to the image or the story or the person that we're looking at, uh, let's say through some of our social media um, channels. And so when we start to compare ourselves to other people, we can get very discouraged at times. And at the end of the day, the only person that you have to compete with, if, if you want to use that word as yourself, you know, can you get up every day with a passion to do better than you did the day before? Can you get up every day with uh, inspiration to learn something new or to contribute something more? Um, and so I don't think that, you know, comparing ourselves to other people is healthy because oftentimes we're comparing ourselves to something that may not be reality in the first place. And at the end of the day, this is your life to live. It's not about trying to live someone else's life. And so I think when we spend a lot of our energy comparing ourselves to other people, we don't give ourselves enough time to sit and make decisions that are good for us. We don't create enough vision for our own life because we're constantly chasing someone else's version of, of what life should be. So that's a huge part of what impacts our self-esteem is this concept of comparing ourselves to other people. Um, another thing that will help you uh, build your self image, uh, and, and John does talk about this a lot in the book, is, is to remove limitations. And it goes back to awareness, which is probably why it's the first thing he talks about, is to understand and realize when you are putting limits on yourself. Some people are just programmed to say no, <laughs> to say no to themselves, to say no out loud, to uh, see an opportunity and immediately think, oh, that's not for me. I couldn't possibly do that. Well, what if you could? What if you could figure it out? What if you could get some, some um, support if you needed it? What if you just already had what it takes to do it? Um, and so I think that there are a lot of people who just put this limit or lid on themselves and you know, over time that can really start to erode our self-image as well because we're not giving ourselves an opportunity to grow and to blossom. And if we never try new things, how do we know what we're capable of? I mean, really, if we don't stretch our thinking and if we don't stretch and try new things, how do we know if we're capable? And so for me personally, you know, I get excited to try new things. Sometimes I have to rein my, myself in a little bit because I can jump head first into a new opportunity and start swimming and figure it out as I go. Um, but, you know, I also find myself sometimes saying, oh no, I couldn't possibly do that. And then I have to take a second and I have to think about it and say, well, wait, why couldn't I? <laughs> so is there an opportunity for you today 
right now to say yes to something that you've been saying no to? Write that question down. It's a great journal prompt. Is there something right now today that I can say yes to that I've been saying no to, but really it could be yes? Powerful question. So another way that we can improve our self-esteem, uh, and John has talked about this uh, in many, many of his lectures and through his books. Um, and you know, I am a certified John Maxwell certified leadership coach, so I, I, I have a lot of access to John and his content. Um, something that comes up a lot is the um, sense of coming from contribution is this, I think he, he inspires people to take a look at how they can change their world. And as we change our world, how we start to change the world around us. And so one of the things John talks about is if you wanna add value to yourself, if you wanna see yourself in a more positive light, if you wanna pop that lid off of your limitations, then seek out ways to help other people. Seek out ways to come from contribution. Grow your leadership potential. Raise your lid on your leadership. Step out in some way and make yourself really come and be of service. And um, good morning, Sarah. I saw your post, your little comment there, and I'm happy to see your face. Um, and so I, I love that because I think that when we give to other people, we get so much more in return. And so when you're giving to other people and you're seeing even just one little ounce of positivity coming from that, it can't help but make you feel good. It can't help but inspire you to say, well, if I, if I do that again, it's going to help someone else. So I think that that has a huge impact on the way that we see ourselves and the self-image that we have uh, and, of course, our self-esteem. So coming from contribution, and if you want to add value to yourself, add value to others. Big. So another way to raise your self-esteem is, um, and this is right from his book, practice a small discipline daily in a specific area of your life. Apply this in an area in your life that seems overwhelming. So when we get overwhelmed, we tend to shut down. And so if there is an area of your life that seems overwhelming, it could be anything, professional, personal, what John is saying is create a habit, practice a small discipline, that's what a habit really is, and put it into motion every day in a specific area that will help you feel less overwhelmed. So, Think about right now, and to give everyone an opportunity to think about this, think about this right now. Write down something that has been challenging or overwhelming to you recently in any area of your life, whatever that might be, just jot that down. And then I want you to either think about it now or go back to this, put a star next to this. Think of one small discipline, one daily habit that you can create that would make this seem less overwhelming. And if it challenges you to come up with something, certainly reach out, I'll be happy to talk to you about it um, and see if we can't get some clarity around that. But that, that is a really, I think, um, great uh, piece of coaching. Okay, another way to improve our self-esteem, this is huge. And I try really hard as a business leader, as a coach to ask this question more often. Uh, and, the, and what the question is, or what, what we're going to uh, talk about here, is to celebrate our small victories. So I try hard to ask my team, what, what was a win for you today? Right? What's going well in your world right now? Right? And I think that as we recognize and celebrate our wins and our successes, it, it's going to shape, again, our self-esteem and our self-image because we're seeing how we're moving forward, making progress. We're seeing the impact we're having on, on our goals. We're seeing the contributions that we're making. We're seeing the positive effects from that. And so what an important question to ask yourself at the end of every day. This could be one thing, if you took, took one thing away from this Monday Morning Mojo, I would say this could be really powerful. 
If you could set a reminder on your phone and this question were to pop up in front of you, what was my win today? And every day you ended your, your, you, you ended your day with that question and really recognized a win that you had. And maybe you create a journal around that, right? Maybe you create a success journal, just like we've talked about having a gratitude journal. Uh, and maybe you create this, this uh, ritual, right? At the end of every night where you can write down ways that you, you won. And I think that's powerful. And then you can look back on that and let those wins build your self-esteem and your self-image of yourself. And what we're really working towards is creating vision, right? So again, the law of the mirror and, and, and the question about vision, vision is different than sight, right? So what we're talking about is that vision in our mind that we have for ourselves, the vision that we have for our lives and the expectations we have around that. So my loves, my loves, do you expect to succeed? Do you expect good things to come to you? Do you expect opportunity? Do you expect blessings? Do you expect to, to be someone in a group of people who has something positive and powerful to say? Do you expect to show your talents every day? Expectations are huge. So it's about embracing this positive vision of ourselves and a positive vision of our lives, right? And honestly, it's so much easier than you think because vision will grow over time and it starts with a daily practice, right? It starts with taking time to sit and reflect, but really to take more time to sit and think about what you want your future to look like. Because what we create in our mind's eye is what we can see as a reality in our life. So rather than letting our days unfold and life happen to us and feeling like, and, and so many of us walk around like this, uh, and, and some of us may not want to admit it, but I think that I, I've watched and I've, I've seen people walk around thinking, well, life is just happening to me. And, you know, I've even seen some people, some people in my own family that I love dearly, but they walk around kind of like, uh, let's just get to the end of the day. Hopefully nothing bad will happen. Nothing will hit me on the head today where I would much rather see you get up and, and open up your day with a bring it on kind of thought, bring it on. You know, what are your expectations? That is such a huge part of what our lives will look like is what do we expect? Do we expect good things to happen? Do we expect opportunity? Do we expect growth? Do we expect to see and live and experience a wonderful life? Now, listen, that is not to say that um, I think that when you think that way, you're immune to trouble or you're immune to problems or you're immune to challenges. Absolutely not. Life has its way of bringing those challenges to us. We know that, right? We've seen that. And it's, it's so when those challenges show up, the way that you're programmed to think can mean everything in how you respond to those challenges, right? Oh, I love that, Jill. We can be warriors. I like that. Yeah, I mean, we can either hide or we can be a warrior. I think that's awesome. Um, at the end of the day, what am I talking about? I'm talking about taking responsibility for your life. So I know we packed again, as we usually do a lot. I realize it's already eight o'clock uh, into this conversation, but um, I, I'm just curious, again, as I always am at the end of a Monday morning mojo, what is your takeaway? What are your ahas? So if you're on Facebook, please use the comments to share something with me about your ahas. I would love to know uh, what you're thinking. And, and anybody here on uh, Zoom, what are you, some of your takeaways or something that you want to put into action based on this conversation? Hey, Cher, good morning. Good morning. Um, I would I would say that um, thinking about working with my team and instituting the daily wins. Yeah. You know, all those things that we've learned over the years, it's nice to be reminded to come back to the basics. And actually, I mean, we know how powerful it is. So putting that into their lives, because we've been there, they may not have run across that same kind of training yet. So bringing that the daily the daily wins 
and uh, increasing their vision every day. Yeah, listen, you know, we learned somewhere along the way as parents, you know, raising our children, if we wanted to, you know, uh, continue to see them grow in the direction that we want them to grow, then we want to reinforce positive behavior. Well, why should that change? Because we become adults, right? So why shouldn't we reinforce our own positive behavior by acknowledging, recognizing, and sharing all the wins and successes? So I love that. I think it's a great way to also become very strategic as, as business leaders, right? To recognize what's winning so we can put it on repeat or expand it. Um, and I think that, that that adds a lot to our strategic planning. So that's great. I think that one of the one of the things that was that is so really awesome is when you realize when you you know when you hear your words and your you see your actions playing out in your children because they're talking about that when you see that and you realize wow man if I was purposeful on that what else could I have done you know what else could we what how else could they have developed even more so so it's it's good. Yeah, I agree. I uh, wish that I knew then what I know now. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I, I'm saying. I, I, I have often said my children probably hear me now or watch something that, like this now and they're like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, as we learn more, we, we do better. So uh, that's the that's opportunity of growth. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Cher. Jill, the, did you the, want to say something? Yeah, I like the, um, the comment tied to uh, helping others and sort of folds back into leadership. I think authentically helping as a leader in a business or outside of a traditional business model is really enriching for all concerned. And, you know, I, I didn't quite look at it as necessarily leadership or by helping, but it does seem to um, put you in that position of being identified as such. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Le leadership is influence, right? So anytime we can can show up and, and provide influence to other people, whether it be in a professional setting, personal setting, church, synagogue, community, whatever it is, you know, that's an opportunity to get other people thinking, right? And, and influence uh, behavior and thinking. And, and that's really leadership. And when we can pour into other people, you can't help but feel good, right? And you can't help but feel inspired when you see what you're doing affecting them right so so for instance you know this past year doing monday morning mojo when i get your feedback or i hear things that you're putting into place i mean that builds my own self-esteem and self-image to say okay this works this is helping people coming from contribution matters it really does and and so it's an amazing opportunity So I would, again, encourage you to go back, look at your notes and decide what you want to put into motion um, and pick one thing that you want to really work on. You know, like I love that share. So the one thing I'm going to do is in institute that question with my team every day. I love it. So, and, and of course, if I can be of support to you, you can always reach out uh, and talk to me about anything. I know we, we put a lot of content out, so lots of process. And so, you know, if there's anything I can do to help you with that, create a game plan, uh, if anyone's interested in talking to me about coaching, feel free to reach out. And if you find this to be valuable, I would love for you to share this Facebook group and the invitation for the Zoom uh, call every Monday with anyone that you know. Um, because again, coming from contribution matters. And we would love to see more people take advantage of this. So you can share the invite and invite people to join the group. And I will also just continue to encourage you to use that Facebook group as a community. So share ideas, share things that you're putting into place, um, because again, your, your, your impact on someone can really make a, a profound effect on them. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you back here next Monday to celebrate our one-year anniversary on Monday Morning Mojo. All right, everyone. Thanks so Thank much. You. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.